Hi everyone, this is Theo from Parkerblocks.com. Welcome to another art product review. Today I'm going to feature this watercolor paper that's made by Strathmore. This is the 200 series watercolor paper. Strathmore categorizes their paper into different series. The 100 and 200 series are the student grade quality paper. 300 is average. Then we have 400 series and the 500 series which are the better quality paper. So this 200 series, this is considered student grade quality. Here at the top left corner, it says that it's paper for practice. The paper is cold pressed, so it has a fine grain sort of texture, acid free, heavy weight. This is 300 GSM paper, so I hope it doesn't buckle. I'm going to test for that later on. It's even washed with good lift with light, wet media techniques. I'm going to try different media on this paper in this review. And there are 30 sheets in this pad, so that's quite good. So it's quite a thick pad. For this particular size, it's 9 inch by 12 inches. I'm not sure if they actually sell this in other sizes, but this is the one that I have. So this is 300 GSM, and this is actually made of post consumer fiber so part of the paper is actually made with recycled paper or materials and this is made in USA this is the first time I'm using the 200 series watercolor paper from Strathmore I have tried their 400 series before and the quality is quite good so today I'm going to try this out and see how well it performs now this is practice paper. The reason why I bought this paper is because usually when I create YouTube drawing demonstrations, I use student grade paper. I use practice paper because they are more affordable. And for this particular pad, I think it's less than US $10 equivalent. So it's quite affordable, but whether or not it's value for money, you have to watch until the end of the video to find out. So this is the paper that I usually use. This is the Dela Roundly Aqua Fine watercolor paper. This is also student grade watercolor paper. I like this paper because this is very affordable. So let me compare this paper with the Strathmore. This is Dela Rowley paper. So there is more texture on it even though this is also cold press paper. So with more texture, this paper is more suitable for use with granulating paints if you want that texture, uh, textural look. So this is the Strathmore paper. It has a fine green surface. The Data Rally is also a bit whiter, but I guess it's a bit difficult to tell from this video. All right, let's put some paint on the paper. I have already drawn some sketches on the paper and this paper, it works very well with ink. The paper handles ink very well. These are lines drawn with my fountain pen that's filled with Noodler's bulletproof black ink. The ink is waterproof and dry. Now, the lines, they have sharp edges, there's no feathering and because this paper is quite thick at 300 GSM, there is no bleed through as well. And this sketch was drawn with the Artramentis document ink. Again, the lines are very solid, very sharp, no feathering. Alright, let's test and see how well this paper performs with wet on wet. Let me just wet the paper first and put some paint on it. So let me try a new gumbosh and watch how the color flows down. So far so good. Let me turn the paper upside down and add the other color. So while the paper is still wet, I'm going to add some permanent red. And you can see how the paint flows down. I'm starting to see that the paper is buckling. Some parts of the paper, some parts of the area are starting to dry. So 
Let me try and move the paint around. Sorry about the noise. So this part has dried, so the paint is not flowing quite well. We'll wait for this to dry. Meanwhile, we'll move on to coloring this sketch. This is the Atramentis document ink. It's waterproof and dry. The paper is actually able to handle watercolor quite well. Now I'm going to use French Ultramarine with a little bit of burnt sienna. I'm going to see how well granulation works on this paper. This is French Ultramarine with a little bit of burnt sienna. Oops, you can see some of the paint actually went over. Sometimes when I'm painting sketches like this, I should be a bit more patient, but I usually do not have the time to wait for the paint to dry. That's why this kind of mistakes can happen. I wonder how this is going to look like when it's dry. Let's put some yellow, green and red here. The paper is able to handle water quite well. It does buckle but it's not a big problem. Let's see how well the paper holds up with another layer of watercolor. This is Krita Color Nero Pencil. And now for some color pencil. The paper works quite well with pencils and color pencils. There's still a lot of white paper white showing through so you do have to press a bit harder in order to cover the paper. So this is me pressing down a bit harder. And lastly I'm going to test markers. This is a Sharpie marker and this is Copic marker. That's W9, warm 9. This is warm 5. Alright, I'm done with all the testing, so let me just tear this off. Put this away. Let me turn this around to show you the buckling of the paper. You can see some indentations here and there. But the marker and the Sharpie marker, it did not, they did not bleed through. So that's great. Let's take a closer look at the wet on wet. The paper works fine with wet on wet. It works well with ink, with pencil. This is the look you can get. 
The fine green texture of the paper works very well with markers too. And this is the watercolor sketch. This is French Ultramarine. There is not a lot of granulation. Even if there's granulation, the granulation is very fine. So the paper texture does help with granulating paints. There is slight granulation here as well, but not very obvious. I feel that the colors are slightly duller compared to the Dela and Rowley paper because this paper is not as bright, not as white. It wasn't able to bring out the vibrance of the colors. So it's not really a big deal when you consider the price of the paper and this is for practice purposes. I think as a practice paper, it's fine. It's able to handle wet on wet relatively well. You can take paint. If you want to do a lot of layering, perhaps this is not the best paper to do so because the paper texture is fine grain. So there's not a lot of tooth to hold on to the third or fourth layer. Let me show you the front and the back of the paper. So this is the texture on the front. That's the fine grain. This is the back of the paper. It is slightly smoother. You can still use this for painting or drawing, of course. To conclude, I would say that this Strathmore 200 series watercolor paper is good for practice purposes. It is definitely not as good compared to 100% cotton paper, but for the price, I think it's worth it. I only paid less than US $10 equivalent to get this watercolor pad with 30 sheets of paper. So for me, I think it's worth it. Now, when I compare this to Dela Rowley, I prefer Dela Rowley because the paper from Dela Rowley is brighter, is whiter. So that's my preference. But if you like paper that is slightly off white, then perhaps you can get this paper. Or if you want paper that has a texture that is more similar to fine green, you want less texture, then this is the paper to get. This paper works well as a mixed media paper too. So that's all for my review today. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. I will post a link in the video description to the text review in case you want to find out where you can buy this paper online. And I will also provide you links to all the art products that I have used earlier on to create all these sketches and marks. So, Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.